Two weeks out from today, Do Yo Live 2017. Hey, what's up, everybody? Dennis Schrodi, founder of Do Yo Live Digital Marketing Interactive Design Conference. Going to try and st stay still today. I've noticed I do a lot of bobbing and weaving on our Facebook Lives, which we've done over 135 of them in just about the past 10, 11 months. So really stuck to that Facebook Live strategy. In two weeks from today, I am super excited. Um, 52 weeks in a year, 50 weeks down, two more weeks to go, and we kick off Do You Live with our new workshops. Uh, I've got myself in the mix with um, uh, B2B lead generation uh, workshops. I've got about 21 people signed up. We've got a max of 25 people. Deanna Facilla is gonna be doing one on women entrepreneurship. And then Nate Riggs is coming up from Columbus, Ohio from NR Media Group. He's gonna sit on our thought leadership panel. But then he's also going to um, be digging into a workshop on how to optimize your web presence. So super excited about all of that. What I wanna to talk to you today about a little bit more is the fact that we um, that I've, I'm running a workshop at Do You Live and tell you a little bit about what that is. In the meanwhile, Tickets are on sale. Uh, we are slated to go back to the Youngstown State's Williams College of Business. We've got two dynamic keynote speakers, Deborah Jasper in the morning talking about the digital disruption and transformation that your organization is gonna have to do and take on in order to stay relevant. Um, we will have a thought leadership panel in the morning, Rob Powlitz from Palo Creative and Nate Riggs, uh, again, and our media group sitting on in on that panel. Um, so we're super, super pumped about that. We made a big announcement about a week and a half ago. Uh, president Jim Trussell, president of Youngstown State University, is going to be providing opening remarks at Do Yo Live. We've got an hour and a half networking lunch session planned. A couple different restaurants in the mix, so that's going to be new. An interactive lounge. We're going to have videos playing on a loop in that interactive lounge from various video makers, people that are speaker sponsors, and of course us as well, that you can take those in uh, while you're at the conference. We should have a VR headset so you can see a totally immersive experience and then also augmented reality as well, which is a different type of experience, almost 3D type of video. And that's not futuristic. It's here right now, right today, and we wanna kind of push that envelope. Um, we will have two DJs, uh, one playing throughout the day and then one at our after party, Becky, Melissa, Ralph, Thank you so much for dropping by. Just give me some updates on Do You Live. Um, we are two weeks out, so I'm super excited. That workshop, the, that's gonna kick off our workshops on August 2nd. Uh, and then afterwards, you're all welcome to attend our kickoff party at V2 in downtown Youngstown. That's gonna be pretty simple. Um, just gonna go hang out at V2 for about five to seven. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, a very uh, interesting, fun way to, uh, to kick off Do You Live this year in 2017. And then obviously on August 3rd is our all-day uh, conference. We have 21, count them, 2-1. Is it this way? This way? I gotta watch, I'm flashing like signs. Some of you might like think this is a different type of conference. Um, so we have 21 breakout sessions, a lot of content to choose from. You're going to get serviced if you are in social media marketing, if you're a business owner, sales, marketing, branding, design. You know We've got a nice gamut of uh, topics that are being presented at the conference. We're expecting well over 200 people this year. We've doubled the amount of sponsors at Do Yo Live. Last year we had seven, this year we've got 13, plus some people with some naming rights. So that's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, just some key statistics that I'd like to share with you. So on a month-to-month -month basis, we deliver on average between 100,000 to 120,000 impressions between our entire online ecosystem, and that counts for email, social media, and web traffic visits. And that's been building since January of 2016 to where we currently sit today. Um, and through that, we employ a content marketing strategy by providing ongoing professional education, bring value to our, the people that are watching these broadcasts in any way that we possibly can with how-tos and marketing. And then in return, we obviously come back at the conference to get together to celebrate this. Um, so that's a, really, that's a really great thing that we've, um, you know, that we've obviously got that many people with 
impressions. But the other other key statistics are the fact that we have close to 5,000 people that are opt-in email subscribers. We have people joining that list every day. We have a, a, a very nice con, uh, community of contributors to our social media platforms, especially through Facebook Live. So those are some really cool things that we've got going on um, at Do You Live from a statistical perspective. Again, this year's conference, we're anticipating over 200 people, again, being in attendance. It's at Youngstown State's Williams College of Business. So you can go grab your Do You Live ticket, use the promo code DOYO2017. So now what I want to talk to you about is my B2B lead generation workshop. So this is going to be a two-hour deep dive. And to give you just some, some background, some context behind this, I've been, a, been a, in a, what I would call my, Jeff, my good friend Jeff Herman, who's actually presenting at the conference. Hey, hey Deanna, thanks for dropping by. Working on your workshop? I am. Um, Deanna Facillo is going to be doing one uh, for women entrepreneurs. Definitely take advantage of that. In any case, my, in my B2B workshop, I'm going to pull on my 15 years of experience of both sales and marketing. I feel like I've always been a quota-carrying marketing person. And, and, and leverage the skill set that I've had of doing over 60 webinars in my career that have generated thousands of leads and contributed millions of dollars to sales funnels. Uh, the premise of this, first of all, the way we're gonna start is from a planning perspective, I'm gonna take you through at least what I know, my methodology of trying to understand your total addressable market. So your TAM, how many people that are in your market can you actually sell your product or service to? We're gonna identify that. We're also gonna take time to talk about uh, coverage. Coverage typically is uh, addressed in two different ways. Number one, how many people in your sales force, either direct or indirect from a channel, can actually get out, make calls, get meetings, and land business because that's going to be a key ingredient to how many leads you generate to you convert, especially in a B2B environment. And then the other part about that is if everybody in your total addressable market today decided that they were going to buy your product or service, how would you get that to them? Coverage, again, good problem to have, right? So if everybody, if you have a thousand people in your total addressable market and everybody said, I wanna buy that today, but it could create obviously a long-term problem as well from a customer service perspective. So we're gonna dig into that. We're also going to dig into conversion. It's very mind-boggling to me when I sit down with people all the time and they talk about they want to generate either five or ten leads a month, or they want five to ten percent growth, or they attract a dollar amount to that growth, which they should. Absolutely they should. But what they're really shocked about is that in order to be able to generate five quality leads a month, you have to have the size at the top of the funnel. So we're going to we're going to dig into top of funnel. Uh, middle funnel, bottom funnel, or what I call you know awareness, consideration, um, and then the purchasing decision, the purchase is made. So we're going to look at buyer's journey. Uh, we're going to look at conversion rate. So if you've got a 10%, 20%, 30% conversion rate across the board from suspect to marketing qualified to sales qualified to opportunity to, to win or loss, we're going to talk about how many leads you're going to have to generate in a given year and the activity that's going to need to support that in order to be able to get you there. So, hey, Megan, thanks for dropping by. Megan is a breakout session leader at Do You Alive two weeks from tomorrow from the event, but the workshops kick off tomorrow. Dan Facillo's uh, on. Melissa Nagy, thank you for dropping by and handling all of our social media. Uh, she's done a fantastic job with Melissa Nagy Designs. And then we've got Becky Bertuzzi, a committee member meeting, uh, member, and also just got done uh, producing our digital guide, which is actually gonna be the print guide at, at the conference. And she's going to be doing a breakout session, two parts at Do You Live as well, which is really cool to have her back doing that, or have her this year doing that. So anyway, as we get through my workshop and we go through um, the conversion of how many suspects and, and leads that you're gonna need to have, um, you know, there is the element that a lot of you might be deploying a marketing automation software as well. And where we're at with that is there's, there's like this slow adoption rate right now, early adopters on marketing automation software, which basically is able to provide you with a much more automated sense of automation uh, depth to scoring and qualifying your leads and, and making the quality of those leads more uh, uh, better. Uh, but we are gonna talk about BANT, B-A-N-T, budget, authority, need, and timeline, how you should be looking at lead qualification um, and, and really digging into, you know, here's a quality lead. Does it fit three or four of these criteria in budget, 
authority, budget, are they going, do they have money to make the purchase, authority, who signs, need, generally there's an, always a need, but timeline, what's, you know, how quickly is that timeline? Because from a sales perspective, you can pass leads over to your sales organization and may, may have just one of these, a heartbeat and a pulse. And at a certain time, your sales force is gonna get conditioned to bad leads. And if they get conditioned to bad leads, they're gonna tune out. So we're gonna talk about the importance of having good quality leads that um, hold everybody accountable from a marketing and a sales perspective. We're also gonna talk about how marketing can bridge the gap between the relationship with sales and marketing, which is a fracture in a lot of organizations. You know, I'm a big believer from a marketing perspective if you're going to be in marketing, you can't talk about you or they. You've got to use the semantic as we, as we is in marketing, as we is in sales. I think you need to get out with your sales organization, ride along with them, feel the rejection in front of customers, experience the wins, sit in on the funnel calls, maybe sell one deal a year. I've been big on this. And most important of all this stuff and building that relationship, when you have a big company function, be willing to pick up the bar tab. You'll win a lot of salespeople over. Um, and then and then as we move through the planning stage of that, really I analyzing and looking at the numbers, we're gonna put a content marketing play uh, and strategy in play in my workshop. What we're gonna do is basically we're gonna walk you through how you can deploy a content marketing strategy through webinar series. Now, Joe Polizzi was our keynote in 2016 and he's phenomenal at what he does. Uh, he was gracious enough to come down and keynote. He speaks all over the world. 4,000 people attend his marketing conference in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but Joe, you know, with Joe, one thing that Joe says, and it, it, it is absolutely a thousand percent true, is that it could take 12 to 18 months to really build a solid audience before you can start to turn that into, you know, lead generation and opportunities. But the problem is this, that your sales organization can't wait to 12 to 18 months. Your C-level executives that are funding your marketing programs, they are not going to wait 12 to 18 months um, in order to be able for you to generate enough content, enough following in order to be able to convert. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how very quickly, if you spin up a webinar strategy in the B2B environment, that that is essentially a solid content marketing play for an entire quarter, um, how you can mine data to get lists churn out content from a blog and a social media perspective that will ultimately help for you to generate net new or nurture existing leads by getting people to sign up and all the things that go into planning a webinar. Uh, and then obviously when you're done with the webinar, being able to make sure that you follow up, scrub that data, do your report outs to your executive um, committee on the internal that fund these programs and then also very important to follow up with your sales organization so they can get out and follow up with these prospects in order to be able to convert them. Attractable ROI. Smart goals, right? Um, and then how do you repurpose all of this content that you're going to get from the webinar? Live off that for three months and then turn around and do that again. You know, I've done over 60 webinars in my career um, for anywhere from your small to mid-sized business startup to Fortune 500 companies. And I wanna, I wanna show you uh, in my workshop on exactly how I've done that very successfully with others um, and some things that how you can get there much more quickly. Um, so, Do Yo Live Digital Marketing Interactive Design Conference. Two weeks from today, we kick off our workshops. I can't believe we are actually here. It's been 55 zero weeks of turning out content on a consistent basis. You know, we've had over 135 Facebook Live episodes, whether it was the Do Yo Live daily short form or the long form of the marketing show. We've rotated it around to various businesses. We've had different people contribute to that content on a consistent basis. We never ask for anything. We just want to give away valuable marketing advice. And we build that audience throughout the entire year, not just not just selfishly for this marketing conference that's taking place on August 2nd and 3rd, um, you know, or you know, just a one-off workshop. That's not what it's about for us. What it's about for us is providing ongoing education through our online assets and building a community, meaning that we have a blog, we syndicate that um, out through social media, we've got a Facebook Live show. If I could ever get out of my own way from a technology perspective, I would absolutely have a podcast today. Um, so that's one thing that is a very big goal of mine uh, after the conference this year, and I, I try not to get too far ahead of myself. 
but is to really get my podcast up off the ground. I've had a couple different ideas and actually may even branch out of the marketing conversation, which um, I think would be really cool because there's a lot more depth than than just marketing that, that I think I can bring to the table. Um, anyway, um, what else? We have a fantastic lineup of speakers and sponsors. And the sponsors just aren't sponsors. Without sponsors, you can't have a marketing conference. Um, it just wouldn't be possible to be able to fund um, the entire event without uh, the people that support us and the businesses and their tremendous resources. So here over this week and next week, we're going to do some sponsor um, shout outs and highlights both in our online assets and then we'll also do them uh, through our email marketing as well and uh, make sure that we're, we're highlighting uh, you know these wonderful businesses that are obviously supporting uh, us from a do you live perspective other than that it is a steamer out today and i am making no apologies about the fact that uh, i love the fact that it's hot because i see a lot of you complaining when it's cold in the winter time so my lunch break i gotta go clear my thoughts i got to um jay thank you you're gonna kill me by the way so um, offline uh, conversation, but I was in Columbus this past week, and uh, I would have gladly helped you out. Um, but uh, anyway, um, the side conversation there. Um, the um, let's see. So what do I want to tell you? <clears throat> do you live August second and third? Um, I'm going to get outside. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to practice my, actually my opening remarks. I promised my committee. You know, last year that, that talk went about 30 minutes, which was about 23 minutes too long. Uh, who's exaggerating? About 25 minutes too long. So I'm going to go uh, take uh, our unruly Labrador, Labrador Retriever puppy. Who